Consider, if you will, three different gambles, A, B, and C. Uh, maybe a uh, slot machine wheel that has uh, ten different symbols, or maybe a ten-sided die. But in any case, uh, A, you will have five chances of winning three bucks and five chances of losing three bucks. B, on the other hand, you have one chance of winning nine but nine chances of losing one. And C, you'll have one chance of losing nine, and nine chances of winning one. And a cursory examination. One might at first start by taking the mean average, and if you have half above of three for A and half below for A of minus three, well, the mean average there is zero. And for B, you have one chance of winning nine and nine chances of losing one, and there again the mean average is zero. And C, if you'll notice, is just a mirror image of B, and one chance of losing nine and nine chances of winning one. And there again, the mean average is zero. Well, maybe one might say, let's look at the statistics since the means are equivalent. And here they are again. Now I've shown my work for the computation of the means. A again, you had five cases of up three, five cases of down three. Yep, the mean is zero. Uh, B, one case of plus nine, but nine cases of minus one. The mean is zero. And C being B's mirror image, down nine one of those times, but nine times up one, and again, the mean is zero. <clears throat> but let's now look at the variances. As you may recall, the variances are the differences from the mean, and here that's zero, so it makes it really easy. And you take them, square them, and add them up. And let's see, we get five cases of three squared, and another five of minus three squared, and well, gee, that's a total of 90. And then we go to calculate the variance for B, and we'll see that it turns out to be the same process for C, that we have a difference of 9 plus in the case of B, but minus in the case of C, and we square it and we get 81. And then there's 9 cases of either minus or plus 1, respectively, for B and C. And, well, good grief, that adds again also to 90. They're identical, both in means and variances, or if you like, standard deviations. Now what do we do? Well, it turns out that most people tend to evaluate the happiness that money brings instead of the money itself. And this comes from the work of von Neumann, Morgan Stern, Aero, De Bruy, and uh, it seems that people really have a very peculiar, different view of the gains that money brings as opposed to the losses therefrom. Consider if you're a farmer or anybody else and uh, you could maybe uh, sell your crop right now and get 50 grand or maybe take a chance and gain 25 or lose 25. And if you gain 25, you buy another cowboy Cadillac. Yeah, it's a Ford pickup truck. But if you lost 25, you'd lose the ranch. That's not quite the same, even though the expected value for the certainty of 50 and the uncertainty that averages to 50 seems to be the same. Well, it seems to be that what happens is that most people evaluate the logarithm of money as a measure of its happiness. You may remember there was even a game show based on this called Deal or No Deal. So that, well, if somebody got 75, they would have the... Uh, Happiness units, the economists call them utiles of 7.2 from a logarithm function. Of course, if they lost 25 from the 50, they'd only get 5.0. And that averages out to 6.1 utiles or smiles. And the average of those 
7.2 utiles coming from the 75 and the 5.0 utiles coming from the 25 is an average of about 6.1 utiles and notice that the equivalent they call it the certainty equivalent of that had it not been a gamble is about forty three point three dollars whereas the non gamble the certainty itself would have provided fifty and maybe in this case something like maybe six point three six point four utiles and people would prefer the happiness coming from the certainty with a greater utility or to put it another way notice that this gamble let's say it's a stock or you're trading commodities that uh, if you go into the market taking these chances that the gamble would trade at a discount of about 6.7 bucks whereas the certainty would trade above the 43 and 30 odd cents instead trading at 50. Now let's go back to what we originally posed. Now remember A was symmetrical it had five cases of up three and five cases of down three. Uh, B was up nine one time and then nine times down one and C was the mirror image of down nine once of ten cases and then up one nine times and uh, here we have computed the log of the average of the expected utilities we have calculated back the certainty equivalent and likewise have uh, figured the discount. Now notice that of these three which one had the highest certainty equivalent meaning we liked it. It was the one that had the highest gain and the least loss. B. Which one had the worst certainty equivalent or the greatest discount? Here a buck and a third or so. That was C which had the, the worst loss and the least gain. And recall that A, B, and C were the same in what the statisticians call the first and second order moments, namely the mean and the variance or standard deviations. But wait, there's more. In the first tableau, which we just looked at, we had a mean of 10, so A would have had half the cases winding up with uh, 13, or 7. Uh, B, again the mean is 10, you would have had one case of 19, nine cases of 9, and C, you would have had one case of 1 and nine cases of 11. But let's see what happens when we change the mean, meaning the total wealth, and it does change. Recalling again that the means, variances, and standard deviations are unchanged, but with the log equivalents, the certainty equivalent, the discounts do change. So in the case of 20, A, you would have had half the time 23 or 17. And now notice the certainty equivalent, well, yes, it's from 20, not 10. But now notice the discount is 22 cents where when 10 was at risk it was 46 cents and still the rank order preferences seem to remain intact that B with its attractive nine extra gain one of the times would have had a lesser discount meaning a greater preference of the three and again C is the ugliest of the three with that horrible loss of nine, yes, you wind up with only 11 and, well, nine cases of 21. And there the discount is the greatest with the lowest certainty equivalent. Let's bump it again. Let's make the mean 40. That means A, you would have half the time 43 or 37. With B, you would have had one case of 49 and uh, nine cases of 39. And C, you would have had one case of 31 and nine cases of 41. And again, the rank order is similar. But notice the discount diminishes because as a relative proportion, it's not as severe. And sure enough, at a mean of 40, that's right, you had half the time 43, half the time of 37, you only have a 11 cent discount. 
with a certainty equivalent of 39.89 versus the 40. And with B, the discount was 10 cents. And with C, the discount was 13 cents. But we still maintain the relative preference that we do like the possibility of a larger gain, avoiding those losses, having a preference for gains over losses, because the losses hurt more. Well, what it means is we look at a picture of the first known extant piece of money, a cuneiform written clay tablet, and what made it money was the fact that it was a bearer note. We can ponder that while time immemorial things have become more interesting, maybe even more complex, that there seems to be a rhyme and a reason, and it makes uh, an emphasis on the fact that the finance uses some tools uh, from mathematics that are very peculiar in the sense of their application and that we move way beyond just the first and second order moments namely the mean and the variance in standard deviation but instead look to utility analysis turns out it actually it goes way beyond that as uh, one had uh, seen in recent developments of only generations ago in terms of option pricing. We'll deal with that at another time. This is Dr. C Invests.